Oh, Mike, on bended knees, stay one more day and cover this party for me. Listen, Ellie, I came to Rome to cover the election. Now that that's finished, as soon as that plane is ready, I'm getting on it. But the Rogers sisters are special, social meteors. And that party tomorrow is going to be very select. Just the elite. They've been away in Venice for a month. Oh, please, Mike. Social functions are not my line, Ellie. Well, for the love of... Betty! Betty, wait! Hey, watch where you're going. Sweetie, you know her? Certainly. Well, that's wonderful. That's Sharon Rogers. No, it's not. That's... Who? Sharon Rogers, the girl I was talking about. It's her party. I want you to cover for me tomorrow. Sharon Rogers. That's right. That's her uncle and her sister. <laughs> I must say, you look as if you've seen a ghost. I have. Man with a Camera. Starring Charles Bronson. I airmailed the layout photos on the Italian election to New York for Pop to take care of. And I let myself be roped into photographing a garden party just to see the girl again. Sharon Rogers or whatever her name was. I don't mind girls popping up out of my past, but I don't like them changing their names and pretending they don't know me anymore. Oh, there you are, Mike. Listen, sweetie, I'll need plenty of art on a contessa. She's as old as Methuselah and ugly as sin, but... What are you looking at? Oh, Sharon. <laughs> she is lovely, isn't she? I'm telling you, Ellie, she's not Sharon Rogers. Mike, she is. We went all through that yesterday. And don't tell me you know her. She hasn't even looked at you all afternoon. Oh, I hope we do. <laughs> Hiya. How do you do? Look, it's me. Yes. Me, Mike Kovac. Delighted. What is this? Really, Mr. Kovac, is it? You know darn well it is. You seem to feel you know me, Mr. Kovac. Feel I know you. I assure you, you're mistaken. We've never met before. Perhaps you're confusing me with my sister. Mona? Oh, I'm sure if I'd ever met Mr. Kovac, I would have remembered him. I'm very sorry. Excuse me? Ellie, I'm telling you I know her, and that's not Sharon Rogers. But, Mike, it is. You're confusing her with somebody else. For heaven's sake, boy, don't you read the papers? Those girls are the biggest news since that wedding at Monaco. That's the uncle over there by the pool. That's the secretary with him. Jonathan really tosses it away on those two nieces. Well, never mind, darling. There's a contessa. Let's concentrate on her. I'm sorry, but I have a phobia about having my picture taken. Oh, well, you shouldn't have. You're a good subject. Oh, hardly. My nieces now, they make charming subjects. As for me, no, no, I, I prefer not. Oh, uh, you won't mind giving me the film, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sorry. I beg pardon? Well, Mr. Rogers, it's a phobia of mine never to give my film away. That's a pity. Yes, it is. I really must apologize to you. However did it happen? Sorry, Mr. Rogers. It was an accident. Are you all right? 
Well, I could use a towel. Of course, of course, Barnes. Show him to my room. Oh, my goodness. Your camera must be ruined. I can't tell you how sorry I am. Well, don't bother. I know how sorry you are, Mr. Rogers. I got those wet negatives right down to a dark room where an American friend of mine worked in Rome. Well, that does it. Want the lights? Yeah. Clear as a bell, not a mark on it. What's so special about it? And the way you busted in here yelling to use this stuff, I thought you had something real hot. Well, because of this picture, I was pushed into a swimming pool this afternoon. Mr. Jonathan Rogers made the mistake of thinking that a quick dip would ruin the film. Who's he, some big shot? Well, at the moment, he's somebody who went to a lot of trouble not to have his picture taken. Tommy, I want you to do me a favor. Be my guest. Put this on a wire photo to New York at your office and mark it for Smitty in the morgue. He won't be on till morning. That's all right. Because if anybody has a memory for faces, it's Smitty. Ask him who this guy is, will you? Excuse me. Lab? Yeah, he's here. Just a minute. It's for you. Transfer from the hotel. Kovac. Mike, this is Sharon Rogers. Oh, I could have sworn it was Betty Donald, a girl I met on a transatlantic crossing about five years ago. I'm sorry about that. But after what I did to you in London, I was too ashamed even to speak. You didn't do anything to me in London. You just didn't show up. I'd like to explain about that and about this afternoon. My uncle was furious when he found out I'd been rude to you. Is that right? Could we get together soon? Tomorrow, maybe, for lunch? Well, what time? Shall we say about two? All right, let's say that at two. Goodbye. <laughs> Please don't hurt him. Don't underestimate him, my dear. I live by my wits. And may I point out that you live very well by them, too. Only be sure of this. Be very sure. Of what? We're almost at the end of our little charade. One might say that the final curtain is about to descend. And neither you nor your Mike Kovac will get in my way. A date made for five years ago at the Savoy Hotel in London, was finally kept in a garden near Rome. My uncle, he says I have to apologize to you. Well, that isn't necessary. But I know you must wonder, even about why I didn't meet you in London. Well, that's one of the things. Don't you think I wanted to? I couldn't. Well, why not? What we had on the ship was so... So good. I didn't want to spoil it. Betty, listen. Betty. Which one of your names is the real one? Sharon Rogers. On the ship, I... I became someone else for a while. You know, I waited for you all day at the Savoy. And all that night, too. Don't. All right. Try to understand, Mike. I owe everything to Uncle Jonathan. Don't ask me to explain. I just couldn't meet you in London. What is it? If Signor is wanted on the telephone. I need to know. Would you have met me at the Savoy if you could? Magnificent. Was I not right, Signor Rogers? Only the skin tones of your niece are for such pearls. Are you pleased with your present, my dear? Oh, Uncle, they're beautiful. Oh, uh, there's an extension in the hall in case your call is private, Mr. Kovac. Thank you. Hello? Oh, yeah, go ahead, Tommy. I can hear you. Message just came through from Smitty in New York. It's about that picture I put on the wire. Yeah, go ahead. 
There's a photo coming through on the wire now. Smitty said along the caption, too. It shows this Jonathan Rogers, or whatever you call him, being hauled off to the pokey. The dateline is Milwaukee, four years ago. What's the charge? Fraud. Apparently, he's quite a con artist. Want me to read the list? No, not now, Tommy, but look, hold on to that print for me, will you? I'll pick it up later. Okay, Mike. You take care of yourself. He seems to be a pretty smooth character. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, uh, Mr. Kovac, have a look at this. I'm sure you must have an eye for beauty. Yellow pearls from the Zulu archipelago. Perfectly marked. Signore, there is no other necklace such as this in the entire world. Sharon, darling, aren't they simply breathtaking? I think you're mean, Uncle. Mona gets everything. <laughs> <laughs> you're a spoiled little thing. But when you have a birthday, we'll find something nice for you, too. My, uh... Personal check will be all right. But of course. Hey, excuse me. All Rob knows the check of Senor Rogers is good as gold. Sixty-five thousand in American dollars, I believe you said. Sixty-five thousand, Signore. That is correct. Isn't Uncle an old darling, Mr. Kovac? Yes, he is. Sixty-five thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. Even in Milwaukee. Even where? Milwaukee. It's a place I know very well. You know of Mr. Rogers? No, I don't believe I do. Oh! <laughs> I'm being most unbusinesslike. I think you'd agree, wouldn't you, Mr. Kovac? Agree to what? Even in uh, Milwaukee, did you say? Milwaukee. Even there, a payment of this size ought to be authenticated. Pronto, Signore Martino. Jonathan Rogers. Certainly, Signore Bartolo will want to know that my check is good. Ah, sure, I would not be necessary, Signore. Oh, Signore Martino? Thank you. Would you be so kind, Mr. Kovac? Mr. Rogers wants me to verify a check of his for 65,000 American dollars. See. Thank you very much. The check is good. Is it all right for me to come to the hotel? Yeah, it's all right. Come on in. Why did you come here? You asked me a question yesterday, and I, I haven't answered it. Well? Five years ago, we made a promise to meet at the Savoy Hotel in London. Yeah, I remember. You asked me yesterday if, if I would have come if I could. That's right. The answer is yes, Mike. Well, go on. I've always known I'd have to marry someone with a lot of money. Because Uncle Jonathan wants it that way? He's devoted his whole life to us. We have to do what he wants, what he thinks is best for us. Tell me more. All right. So now you know. Well, just in case you don't recognize the shot, that's a dear old Uncle Jonathan being hauled off to jail in Milwaukee. On the back side is a list of his arrests and other names. I know. Mike. What happened on the ship, that was for keeps. I knew it, and you knew it. That's why I couldn't meet you in London. Do you know what I was on that ship? 
I was a shill. I pulled suckers into a phony card game. I couldn't pull you into anything phony. Not you. Sharon? Sharon, what's going on now? I can't tell you. Why don't you level with me? Now, that check your uncle wrote yesterday, it's good. I inquired again at the bank today, in case he made a phony call. I don't question me. Just stay out of it. Well, I've got reasons for being in. I'm a photographer. I sell stories. And besides, I don't like getting pushed into swimming pools. Sharon. There's another reason. You know, five years ago, back there on that boat, I can't get over that. Mike, listen to me. Jonathan won't let anything stop him now. He'd kill me, Mike, and you too. You've got to understand. Stay out of this, Mike, please. Stay out of what? Tell me. Mike, please. Just leave me alone. Where have you been? I'm sorry, Jonathan. I hurried as fast as I could. I'm not interested in your apologies. I've told you repeatedly that timing is of the essence. Now then, are you quite ready? Jonathan... I said, are you ready? Do you know your lines? Yes, Jonathan. Well, then, come on. Sharon was frightened of something that was going to happen in the salon of Signore Bartolo the jeweler. I decided to wait. I told you before, Signor Rogers, another necklace of yellow pearls is almost impossible to find. Each pearl perfectly graduated. Each the same glorious yellow. Such a necklace is unique. You're wasting my time, Bartolo. I told you that I must have another just like it. Little Sharon here has given me no peace of mind at all since you delivered the pearls to Mona. We've always had everything exactly alike, ever since we were little girls. And you shall again, my dear. Now, sir, you promised to investigate some special sources? I have, Signore. I telephoned to Amsterdam last night. I said the need was dire. If there are yellow pearls anywhere, I said, I must have them. I had a reply this morning. You found another necklace. Oh, Uncle Jonathan, how wonderful. You understand, Signore, this is a special source. The price will be very high. Much too high. How much? 250,000 American dollars. Sold. But, Signore, the price is so high. Sold. Now, how soon can you get them? Well, I, uh, I can telephone, Signore. The courier can take the plane to Rome within the hour. Good. Tell your man to leave at once. Si. Pronto? Signor Bartolo chi parla? Amsterdam. Si, per piacere. Buonasera, signori. Recall an old adage in our business, my dear. You cannot cheat an honest man. That fool's asking 25,000 more than he should. May I go now, Jonathan? Go? Don't be absurd. They argued as they left, and I knew that Bartolo was the key figure in whatever they were planning. We have met before, Signore. I'm sure of it. it... Why, that's some memory. It was yesterday at Jonathan Rogers' place. Oh, yes, of course. Now, may I be of some service to you, Signore? Kovac. And yes, you may be of some service to me, but then again, I might be of some service to you. I do not understand, Signore. Mr. Bartolo, you listen to me now. Rogers is a crook. You understand that? A con man, a swindler. Signor Rogers? Ha, that is absurd. All right. Here, take a look at this. This picture here was taken in Rome at the villa. 
That was taken four years ago in the States. Senor Rogers was in prison? Often, for fraud. Mr. Rogers is a professional swindler. Now, why were he and the girl here a while ago? Chimpano. At the airport? What about it? I'm to be at the airport at three. Senor, is that true? You are not mistaken? Well, here, you can call the police and check if you want to. They must have a file on them. Oh, no, 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 not the police. Please, my reputation will be ruined. Well, let's get out to the airport. Senor Kovac, I do not see how Senor Rogers would cheat me. He has already paid me $65,000 from one set of pearls. And now he's anxious to buy another one at a much higher price. Well, I don't know how he's going to cheat you, but he's going to cheat you all right. Believe me. Now, let's go. The plane from Amsterdam is already in. The courier will be now in customs. Bartolo, let me get this straight now. You're supposed to meet this courier and pay him 225,000 American dollars? For the pearls? See, si, Senor Rogers himself approved the price. That is why you must be mistaken. He's waiting for them now at the villa. How'd you get in touch with this guy in Amsterdam? I have sources. They made it known I was seeking yellow pearls. Now look, Bartolo. You mean to tell me this character you've never seen before calls you on a phone and says he has some? But yes, he's arriving with them now. Well, how are you supposed to pick him up? I'm to be waiting for him here. He will find me. Now I'm beginning to get it. Bartolo, look at these pictures. See this guy in the background behind Rogers? A guest at the party? A guest on my foot. His name is Barnes. He's Rogers' secretary. At least he was two days ago here in Rome. So? So, look at the fellow. That's Barnes, the courier from Amsterdam. Now look, you act naturally and watch yourself. Mr. Bartolo? See? Si? I'm from Amsterdam. I don't have much time. I have to catch the next plane back. Did you bring me pearls? I have. You have the money? See, si, Signore, first I would like to examine the pearls. They're genuine. I don't do business any other way. Are you satisfied? Perfectly. See you, Kovac! See you, Kovac! The same pearls, aren't they? You sold them back as own pearls. Yeah. Yeah. Let me up. Yeah. Now, where are the others? Where are the others? Gate 9. The others are Gate 9. Why, congratulations to you, Mr. Kovac. Well done, sir. Well done. Where's Sharon? Andiamo. We were on the plane, ready to take off for Vienna. Yes, I know. I knew we weren't going. I knew it when I saw you at the party. Why didn't you let me help you? you know, I will now if you let me. Sharon, why didn't you trust me? It isn't trust, Mike. It, it's something else. The same reason I didn't meet you in London. Well, why? Because you're a very real person. I'm not. <laughs> 